Introduction to Forex In this video you will learn the history of the foreign exchange market, the market structure, the market participants, and the various Forex pairs. In 1944, in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, USA, 44 of the world's leading nations created a new international monetary system that became known as the Bretton Woods system. According to this new system, countries decided to tie their currencies to the United States dollar, convertible into gold at the price of $35 per ounce. Central banks would buy and sell their country's currency in order to stabilize it within 1% of the pegged level to gold or to the dollar. In 1971, the United States abandoned the fixed value of the dollar and allowed it to float, in other words, fluctuate against other currencies. By 1973, all the nations participating in the Bretton Woods system agreed to allow the exchange rates to float. Today, most currencies are freely floating, and their price is determined based on the demand and supply of each currency. The foreign exchange market, or Forex market, is simply the place where currencies are traded or exchanged for one another. It is the world's largest financial market in terms of volume traded. The average daily turnover in the global foreign exchange is continuously growing, starting with $1.7 trillion in 1998. The daily volume increased to $2.2 trillion in 2005. In 2007, it reached $3.5 trillion. By 2011, the average daily turnover was $4 trillion U.S. dollars. And year 2015 onwards, it has surpassed $5 trillion turnover per day. Trading in London accounts for 37% of the total daily turnover, making it by far the most important global center for foreign exchange trading. Singapore, Hong Kong, and Tokyo have 22% of daily turnover. New York has 19% of daily turnover. Europe has 8% of daily turnover. Switzerland and Australia have 2% of daily turnover each, leaving 10% to the rest of the world. The foreign exchange market is a global market. It has no physical location and operates 24 hours a day, five days a week, Monday to Friday, all over the globe. As one major Forex market closes, another one opens. According to GMT, for instance, Forex trading hours move around the world like this. Trading starts on Sunday night at 2200 hours GMT in Sydney. Tokyo joins Sydney two hours later, and by the time Tokyo closes at 900 GMT, London has already opened at 800 GMT. At 1300, New York also opens. And we have both London and New York open until London closes at 1600 hours. This is the most liquid period of the day with the highest volume. When London closes, trading continues in New York until 2200 hours when it closes and Sydney opens and the cycle starts again until Friday night. This global market has three levels of participants. The first level is called the interbank market. It is where the biggest banks exchange currencies with each other. Even though it only has a few members, most of the five trillion a day volume ends up here. The second level is the big Forex brokers that have direct access to the interbank market to trade bulk amounts for their clients or smaller brokers. The third level is small Forex brokers and retail Forex traders. Most retail traders can't access the interbank market directly, so they need brokers in order to trade Forex. The main Forex market participants can be divided to four distinct categories. The most influential participants in the Forex market are the central banks and federal governments, with their major task of maintaining foreign reserve volumes and adjusting monetary policy in order to meet certain economic goals. Commercial banks and money transfer and remittance companies are among the largest participants in this market, as they conduct all day-to-day -day operations on behalf of their clients. 
international and commercial companies are also involved the Forex market. Whether a business is selling to an international client or buying from an international supplier, it will often employ hedging strategies to reduce or completely eliminate the foreign exchange risk. And last but not least are the speculators, who attempt to make money by taking advantage of fluctuating exchange rate levels. Speculators can be large traders such as head funds and small traders, just like you and me. Trading in the foreign exchange market is always done through pairs. In order to buy a quantity of one currency, first you need to sell its equivalent quantity of another currency. So to buy euros, for example, you have to sell first the equivalent in US dollars. The first currency in the pair is called the base currency. The second currency in the pair is called the quote currency. Let's say that the market price in Euro US dollar is 1.1300 to buy one euro, which is the base currency. You must give 1.13 US dollars, which is the quote currency. In other words, you pay $1.13 for every one euro you get. The seven most traded pairs of currencies in the world are called the majors. Majors have the US dollar as one of the currencies in the pair, and they are usually referred to with their nickname. Euro against the US dollar, known as the Euro. US dollar against the Japanese yen, known as the dollar yen. British pound against the US dollar, known as cable or sterling. US dollar against the Swiss franc, also called Swissy. US dollar against the Canadian dollar, or loony. Australian dollar against the US dollar, or Aussie dollar. New Zealand dollar against the US dollar, known as Kiwi. The major Forex pairs represent 80% of the daily traded volume and have the following features. They are very liquid, as they are heavily traded. They are not very volatile compared to other pairs. They are very hard, if not impossible, to manipulate. They are characterized by very low transaction costs as a result of their high liquidity. Beginning Forex traders are strongly advised to trade only the major pairs. Currency pairs that do not involve the US dollar are called crosses, because usually before we trade these pairs, we have to trade first a pair which include the US dollar. For example, let's say you have Euro and you want to buy Yen. You must first exchange your Euros to US dollars using the Euro US dollar exchange rate and then convert the US dollars you got into Japanese Yens using the US dollar Japanese Yen exchange rate. Or you cross out the US dollar from the equation and you get directly the Euro Japanese Yen rate, hence the name crosses. Other than the Euro Japanese Yen, the most actively traded cross pairs are New Zealand dollar against the Japanese Yen, British pound against the Japanese Yen, Euro against the British pound, Euro against the Swiss franc, Australian dollar against the Japanese Yen, New Zealand dollar against the Australian dollar. Crosses are considered slightly riskier than major pairs and known for the following features. They are less liquid as they are not heavily traded. They are more volatile compared to the majors. They are slightly easier to manipulate than majors due to the reduced volume. They are characterized by low to medium transaction costs. Currency pairs with at least one currency being the currency of an emerging economy are called exotics. Some of them are Euro against the Turkish Lira US dollar against the Turkish Lira US dollar against the Mexican Peso US dollar against the South African Rand US dollar against the Singapore dollar US dollar against the Danish Krone US dollar against the Hong Kong dollar the exotic pairs are not traded as often as the majors or crosses, so the cost of trading them can be high, and they have the following features. They are very illiquid. They are very volatile pairs because of their sensitivity to sudden political and financial developments. They are susceptible to manipulation due to very low volumes. They have very high transaction costs. 
Only very experienced Forex traders are advised to trade exotics. Ds. In our next video, we will talk about shares. Thank you for watching.